with all of you in India. I've actually been here for about two weeks meeting with uh, my team in the Bangalore office and uh, this week with uh, my team in the Pune office who uh, came in and who uh, gave a couple of talks earlier today which packed the room. Um, I'm really honored. Uh, what I wanted to talk about today is uh, how do we move PostgreSQL forward? And I'm thinking about that question specifically uh, from a development perspective because I'm a developer. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of other important ways that PostgreSQL gets moved forward. Um, and uh, Nikhil actually spoke of that earlier today when he talked about the importance of telling the people that you know why they should be using PostgreSQL. Uh, I think that topic is super important, but I'm not going to talk about it. Um, instead, I'm going to talk about the process by which PostgreSQL features get developed and what kind of features the PostgreSQL community tends to produce. Um, I think most of us would agree that PostgreSQL features uh, are usually high quality, which is a very good thing. Um, they are often delivered incrementally across multiple releases. So you get something, and then you get a little more, and then the next release or two releases later, you get a little more than that, and you're building towards some goal. They're sometimes slow to arrive. So in December, uh, Amit Langote's partitioning patch was, was committed by me, and uh, that was the culmination of about 18 months' worth of effort. But before that, it had been about five years before, since someone had seriously attempted that project. So the high quality part is great. The delivered incrementally part is OK. The slow to arrive part, though, that, that's not as good. So why does that happen? I think in order to understand the answer to that question, one thing you have to think about is, well, what are the consequences if we go too fast? And, and obviously, the consequences are, are bugs, right? If we commit patches before those patches are really ready for prime time, um, then bad things can happen to our users. Uh, at the sort of milder end of the spectrum, they might just have a frustrating user experience, right? They might try to use the feature, and nothing too terrible happens, but it's annoying. That's bad. A little worse, they might have performance problems. The feature might really not perform at the level that uh, the user was hoping, and they might even find it to be a totally useless feature because of that bad performance. Um, more serious still would be if the user started getting wrong answers to their queries. I think most of us would agree that that's really bad, and one of the reasons why we use PostgreSQL rather than any other system is because we trust that it won't do that, right? Um, perhaps more serious still, uh, perhaps more serious still would be server crashes. If the server crashes, not only do you not get an answer to your query, but everybody else who's running a query on the system at the same time gets booted out and they have to reconnect, which can be very disruptive in production environments. And the worst possible consequence of all for the user would be we, you lost your data. It's gone. Sorry. Right? So, uh, those are the consequences for the user. What are the consequences for the project? Well, obviously, bugs force people who otherwise would have been developing the next generation of features to stop that work and go fix bugs. That's not great. And, and maybe the reputation of the project could even be damaged by that. So because of all of those things, PostgreSQL tends to have the philosophy that getting it done right is more important than getting it done sooner. But wouldn't it be nice if we could have both? I mean, that sounds pretty good, right? Why can't we? Well, I sat down and thought about that question, and I, I, before I talk about the answers that I came up with that, to that question, I, I just want to put this in perspective. I do think that PostgreSQL needs to do more in order to add new great features faster, but at the same time, I think there's a huge amount of progress that's already being made. So you see in 9.4, we had logical decoding and JSONB. Uh, 9.5, among many other features, brought us insert on conflict. Parallel, first release of parallel query came in in 9.6. And, and 10 is going to have 
declarative partitioning and logical replication and significantly improve parallel query, which I know a number of people are looking forward to. And all of these releases have uh, performance improvements and, and test frameworks. All the same, other people are not standing still. Well, we're busy adding features, other databases are also adding features. And some of the features that we've added relatively recently have been present in some commercial database systems for decades. So in some ways we're ahead, but in other ways I think we have some catching up to do. Um, and of course our goal should be to innovate as quickly as we can, uh, provided that we can do it without the, the bugs. So that gets back to the question of why we can't make this faster, why we can't make progress faster, and I came up with six reasons when I thought about this. So number one, somebody submits a patch, but it's not good enough. Sometimes the author knows that the patch isn't good enough. Sometimes the reviewers or the committer will say, this patch is not good enough. Um, political opposition can play a role. You can have people say, that's a terrible idea. We want that, don't want that in PostgreSQL. And that may or may not be true, but people do say that from time to time. Um, I think another thing is that patches typically have one or two primary authors. It's very rare to see a patch developed by a large team, which is fine for small features, but for big things like partitioning, it can result in a situation where someone's only willing to make an attempt, say, every five years. Um, the PostgreSQL development community actually isn't all that large. That's another reason. Uh, there is at times a shortage of committer bandwidth. And, and sometimes a patch author has what would be a promising patch, and they just give up. And all of these are things that slow down progress. So before I talk more about what underlies that, I want to show you a few statistics that I did. Uh, and before I show you the statistics, I'm going to tell you how I gathered them. Um, I used git log uh, to identify all the PostgreSQL commits from 2016. And I made a little attempt to filter out junk. So I used the dash W option to suppress white space only changes, dash capital M to suppress changes due to renames. And I eliminated uh, four large mechanical commits, three of which were updates to the translations, which changed lots and lots of lines of code without actually taking any development work because those translations are just being copied in from another Git repository. Um, and then after doing those things, I recorded the number of new lines of code um, in uh, each commit as per the dash dash stat option to get. Uh, and I went through all of the commit messages and manually identified the primary patch author. Uh, it was just too complicated to figure out how to distribute credit in the case of patches with multiple authors. But I don't think the results came out too, too distorted. Um, and then I imported the results into a PostgreSQL database and started having lots of fun with window functions. Um, so here's some of the things I found. Uh, in 2016, there were 141 people who contributed at least one new line of code to PostgreSQL. 90% of the lines were written by 37 people. 66% of the lines were written by 14 people. There were 18 committers who committed at least one patch by a non-committer. But 90% of the new lines of non-committer code were committed by six committers. 66% of the lines of new non-committer code were committed by just two committers. Some of you can probably guess who those two people were, but we'll see shortly. Um, so here's the top primary patch authors, and this is the code that people actually were the primary author of the patch. This is not who committed the code, this is who wrote the code. And it's just sorted by a uh, number of lines. There does seem to be an outlier. And that keeps shutting off for some reason. Um, so uh, obviously, Amit Langote's par partitioning commit uh, had a huge impact. That was a big patch. That's not all 9,000 of his lines. It's about half of that. But clearly, it's a lot of code. Uh, the asterisks mark people who are not, at the present time, committers. 
So you can see that an awful lot of the development work gets done uh, by a small number of people, right? The, the 25th, oh, I don't know why this, I don't know why this is happening so frequently. Yeah, apparently my Mac is defective. Uh, so the 25th most popular, uh, most prolific patch author uh, wrote about 2,000 lines of code, which was about 1% of the code change uh, that happened last year. And to get up to a total of 90% of the uh, commits, you've got to go down to position number 37, but that didn't fit on the slide. Um, in terms of committers, right, Tom and I commit a lot of stuff. You can see there are quite a number of other people who ha have done very significant work. I mean, committing one or two or three or 4,000 lines of code is not a small amount of work. Uh, but the, the work of getting things committed actually does fall mostly on a relatively small number of people. So what do these statistics tell us? Uh, well, I think one thing they tell us is the community is fairly small. In theory, anyone can submit a patch. Every single person in this room can submit a patch. By the way, please do. But in practice, nearly all of the work uh, is done by a few dozen people, which is not a lot of people. I mean, it's a pretty good number of people. I've worked for companies that had fewer total employees than the PostgreSQL has in that few dozen people, but it's not an enormous number of people either. It's not that big. There's probably other databases that have a development staff which is significantly larger than that. Um, another obvious conclusion here is that Tom Lane is completely ridiculous, right? He personally writes six times more code than anybody else and still commits an incredible amount of non-committer code. Um, another consequence of, another thing we can draw from these statistics is that if you can't catch the interest of one of the relatively small number of active committers, getting your patch committed might turn out to be difficult. Here are a few examples of people who have run into that difficulty. A lot of these patches are actually waiting for the attention of one particular person who is the expert in that area. Uh, Hakey, Tom. So one conclusion that you might come to is that, well, we just need more committers. And that's probably part of the answer, but it's not that simple. Actually, committing a patch is incredibly easy. Right, you just apply the patch, you type git commit minus a, you type git push, you're done, right? No problem. The problem is reviewing a patch and figuring out whether you should commit it and whether it needs changes before you should, you should commit it and what those changes are. So what's actually the hard part is reviewing a patch. And it's hard to find people who are experts in the source code. Um, especially people who are experts in the source code who actually have a, 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 an adequate amount of time to spend patch review. If we had a whole bunch of those people sitting around, then we could solve all of our commit bottleneck by just making those people uh, committers. But it's hard to become an expert. It takes a lot of time. And the problem gets worse if you have trouble getting feedback on the patches that you do write. So there's a little bit of a chicken and egg problem here. But Back to this question of why can't we make progress faster? Same slide you saw before. I am gonna make an argument that actually that fourth problem is in some ways the root of this. There's just gonna be only so many, uh, so, so much progress that a few dozen people can make, no matter how talented those people are. And I think the evidence is very good that we have some extremely talented people uh, working on the PostgreSQL project. Um, in some ways, these other problems uh, cascade from the fact that the development community isn't all that hard. 
if you've only got a few people who really know the source code and are experts, um, then those people are, not, are only going to be able to write so many patches. And the other people, who are then not experts, are going to find it more difficult. Um, I also think that political opposition is something that gets worse in a, in a small community. The more people you involve, the more opinions you can average, and the more likely it is that the result is going to be a, a, a sensible result. When you only have a few people involved, some guy named Robert Haas might say your patch sucks, and if nobody else offers an opinion, then oops, right? I try not to do that, but I'm sure I've done it, right? Um, and of course, to get more committers, we've got to have more developers, because that's where committers come from. Um, and this problem of the patch author giving up, obviously you're going to have a certain amount of that no matter what, but that too is tied in to the size of the development community. The people who are very involved as developers are really, really busy. Simon is really busy. I'm really busy. Tom is really busy. Uh, Amit is really busy. There are so many, so many of the people who work on PostgreSQL work incredibly hard, and somebody new shows up, and they have a patch to do X or Y or Z, and sometimes they get a very quick answer to that patch, like, you need to fix this, 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 and this, send. And that doesn't always encourage people. So what do, you do? So what do we do? Um, I think that what we need to do is involve more people in PostgreSQL development. We need to make the PostgreSQL development community bigger. Um, EnterpriseDB has been working on that as much as we can, uh, trying to get more people involved in uh, PostgreSQL development. Um, I know others have been working on this as well. But I think it's critical that we not think of PostgreSQL entirely as this is a thing which a bunch of really smart people make and everybody else in the world can only use. And they can never understand what goes into it, how it gets made. It'll be there whether they support it in any way or not. Eh, it probably will. But it can be better if you support it. It can be a lot better uh, if you support it. Um, another thing I think we need to do is we need to help people who are on the margins of the community, say the people who are in that 141 circle of people who, who got some code committed last year, but not in that core of 37 people who did most of the work. We need to help those people learn more and get better at what they do. And the people who are in that group of 37 who are not yet committers, perhaps some of them should just be made committers, but others have things that they need to learn first. And we need to help them learn those things and, and encourage them, as Simon said this morning, to persist so that they attain the level of knowledge which lets, them, which lets us, so to speak, trust them with the car keys. Um, companies that care about PostgreSQL should pay their employees to help with patch review and commit, especially review. Review, 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 review. I am so grateful for all of the companies who have put very significant amounts of resources uh, in, in many cases into helping this process of moving PostgreSQL forward. I feel happy every time I see that someone has posted an interesting patch and five or 10 or 15 people have replied with some comment on that patch. Even if it's just, I like it, or I tried it and it worked, or I tried it and it didn't work. Those are valuable comments. Those help to move things forward. Sometimes, as a, a committer, I feel like I'm in a bit, little bit of an echo chamber. Somebody submits a patch, and no one says anything. So then I'm left scratching my head and going, I is this a good idea or not? It's really valuable to have people weigh in and say, I like that thing, that's a direction I'd like to see us go, or I don't like that thing, let's not do that, right? And, and not just whether they like it or not, but what they like or, or dislike about it. Because many proposals are going to be imperfect when they're first presented, uh, but in many cases, it's not so much a question of doing something or doing nothing, but figuring out what is the best thing to do. Um, 
And you don't have to be a developer or even have a PostgreSQL developer in your company to get involved in the process of patch review. Some of the most valuable review that happens uh, in, in the community is done by people who write very little, if any, code of their own and may not even know how. They test it, they bang on it, they exercise cases where uh, things might go wrong and they find out whether they do. And we've got several people in the community, Jeff Janes comes to mind, who are really good at finding out where things go, are, are apt to go wrong. A and that's something that everybody can participate in uh, if, they, if they even use PostgreSQL, um, assuming you know enough to apply patch and compile. Um, if you can review C code, even better. Um, another thing I would say is that working in teams can make it possible for the PostgreSQL community uh, to tackle larger projects. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But really, the biggest point that I have on this slide is you tell me, how do we make the PostgreSQL community bigger? I think that's something we need to think about. I don't think the current size of the community is bad. We've obviously achieved great things. But I think there is a lot more that we can achieve. And I'm looking for ideas. Um, I got a couple of quick examples of how I think that working in teams can sometimes help us to make faster progress. And these are just based on my experiences at Enterprise DB, because those are the experiences that I have uh, in this area. Um, you know, parallel query early on was really done by two or three people. But once the initial patches were in and you could run a very limited selection of queries in parallel, very, very limited uh, when those first uh, commits went in, people started to pop out of the woodwork and say, hey, I can help with some aspect of that. So David Rowley committed parallel aggregate and uh, Constantine Pan submitted a patch for parallel gene index build, which hasn't been committed, but he, he wrote it. Um, Andreas Carlson did a lot of work on uh, relabeling everything and contrib correctly for parallel safety, um, a, a, an entirely mechanical and thankless task, which I'm so grateful that somebody stepped up and did, because otherwise somebody would have probably told me I had to do it. Um, several people have submitted patches for parallel utility commands. None of those have been committed yet, but perhaps they will be. Um, B-tree index creation uh, vacuum. Uh, but what we've done at Enterprise DB is we've actually uh, put together a pretty large team of people uh, who have uh, all been able to work in different areas of the source code, which really wasn't possible before those initial commits went in. You would have had to imagine how everything was going to come together, and that's very difficult to do. But once we sort of had a scaffolding, even though it was very primitive, that opened up an opportunity for lots of people uh, to begin working on this problem and uh, working on different areas of it, which I think is pretty cool. Um, another example of this uh, where we've taken a slightly different strategy is with hash indexes. Uh, we decided that it would be cool if hash indexes had write-ahead logging so that they were crash safe and you could really use them, which you kind of can't in current versions of PostgreSQL. I mean, you can, but it's probably a bad idea. Um, just because of the nature of that work, a lot of it had to done, be done by a single person, and Amit uh, did most of that work. Uh, but he got a lot of help from the people around him. Uh, Kuntal uh, did the wall consistency checker and a lot of stress testing. Um, Mithun uh, worked on the meta page cache and a better expansion algorithm. Ashutosh Sharma uh, worked on uh, a whole bunch of things, actually. Uh, contrib module support uh, and several other important optimizations. And so, uh, and the, the quality in both of those cases, the quality of the work that we were able to do uh, was, I think, increased by having more people involved. So uh, I don't want to present that as some kind of great triumph. I do think that we made progress faster by uh, having teams of people working together on projects, which is something that has kind of been difficult to figure out how to do in the PostgreSQL community in the past, or at least I've, I've found it somewhat uh, difficult to figure out how to make that work. I think maybe we've started to figure out a few things there, um, but it really isn't going to work uh, unless we can expand the development community, and in particular, uh, the pool of skilled reviewers uh, is just absolutely key. 
uh, the pool of people also who are willing to just sit down and test a patch and say whether they think it works. Uh, writing your first patch is always hard. You'll probably make a lot of mistakes. But if you don't write your first patch, you'll never write your second patch. And if you never write your second patch, you'll never write your 50th patch. And then you'll never become a committer. We really need more committers because of that. And going forward is much slower than going back. This is not an index scan. OK, so uh, in the future, uh, just some hopes. Uh, I hope we're going to see more people get involved in PostgreSQL development. I really particularly hope that we're going to see more people who get involved with uh, review and testing. Um, I tend to be, I have tended in the past to be slightly skeptical of testing because I'm like, I can just look at the patch and see the bugs. Um, but I'm starting to learn the error of my ways because uh, a ton of work has been done uh, on testing by a lot of people uh, in, in the PostgreSQL community. Um, and uh, with partitioning, for example, there were quite a number of people who jumped in there and they really beat on that patch. And I think they found things which could have easily gone unnoticed. Um, eventually, hopefully those things will uh, lead to more committers. Um, I think it's also good if we aim to try to do more multi-person projects, especially I'd like to start to find ways to do some of those things across companies, which is obviously more difficult because different companies are naturally going to uh, have, um, have different priorities. Um, but if they can be made to line up, uh, I think uh, there's a lot of value there because people do come at things with different perspectives, and I think that's really helpful in trying to sort of chart the best way forward. And of course, the ultimate goal, PostgreSQL world domination. All right, that's all I got. Thank you very much.